Virginia currently ranks number six in wine grape production in the U.S. and has a booming viticulture economy with over 280 wineries in the state. I happen to live in the epicenter of many of them and have forged relationships with many of the owners of these beautiful estates. This is a story about that. So my friend Jordan and I are starting a new company together, Thistle Collective. The mission is simple, to make quality crafted goods with a more production-based system in mind to keep the price of the goods reasonable. Say we batch out 20 of the same products at a time. One of those products will be branded charcuterie boards for the aforementioned wineries to sell in their tasting rooms as souvenirs for visitors. We're focusing on using high quality hardwoods and adding details like a copper lined pommel and a leather hanging strap. For these, I thought making a reusable template out of MDF would be the way to go. I started out in SketchUp to lay out the design of my board with a few parameters in mind. Once I had my board designed, I made it into a component and exported an SVG file using the plugin Fabric. Then I jumped into the Inventable software Easel and imported the SVG. Faber exported the right shape, but it's a little goofy in that the size is a bit off. So I re-entered my parameters in Easel, which was easy enough to do. I'm using Easel Pro, which has features like custom bits and V carving. For this operation, I have the X carve set up with a custom bit, which is a quarter inch upcut spiral bit. To mount the MDF to the spoil board, I used this double-sided woodworking tape a company Hippie Crafter sent me to try. The advantage of this stuff over carpet tape is it's strong, but doesn't leave a residue. So strong, in fact, the amount I'm using here is way too much. With the MDF mounted, I went back to easel to set up the X-carve for the cut, then used the Z-axis probe to give the X-carve a reference to the material and started the cut. It's pretty fun to watch the CNC cut. In soft material like this MDF, this cut took around 11 minutes. Once the cut was done, I pried up the template and you can see here how strong the tape actually is. Once my template was done, I grabbed a piece of curly soft maple to test out how it worked. It was relatively flat, so I jointed an edge at the jointer, then ripped it to width at the table saw, then face jointed and planed it to thickness to get my charcuterie board blank. Using more of that Hippie Crafter tape, I mounted the template onto the blank. You can see here I mark measurements on the template so I know at a glance the parameters that the blank stock needs to meet. I usually keep a smaller blade on my little bandsaw for tight radius cuts like these and leave a bigger resaw blade on my big bandsaw. I made the cuts keeping somewhat close to the template but being careful not to mar the template. Anything I couldn't get with the bandsaw I dialed in even closer with my disc sander. The reason I'm trying to get it so close to the template is I'm using very figured maple which is notorious for chip out and I'll be routing on all green directions. From there, I drill out the hole in the pommel, then head to the router table. The bit I'm using here is an Amana half inch shank by four and three quarter inch downcut spiral pattern bit. I get most of my bits and blades from toolstoday.com and I'll have affiliate links in the description. With the bit installed, I run the bearing on top against the template while the bit does its job making a perfect replica on the blank. You can see all of that figure on the side of the blank and what kind of finish taking a light pass leaves.
Then it was time to remove the template. You see here again just how strong that tape is. I'm impressed. With the board flat on the table, I marked some copper pipe with a scratch awl, then cut it on the metal side of my shop. My camera decided to stop recording right as I was about to install the copper, so you'll have to forgive this dramatic recreation. With the shape of the board basically done, I sanded it to 220 grit and made sure the copper insert was absolutely flush so there's no danger of scratching whatever table it would sit on. It was time to brand the board. Some friends and colleagues of mine own a beautiful award-winning winery just over the pass through the Southwest Mountains, about 15 minutes from my shop. So I decided to make a gift for them to display in their tasting room, Keswick Vineyards. I had them send me their logo file and dropped it into Easel Pro. I mentioned earlier Easel Pro allows you to use custom bits and V carving. So I set up the spindle of the X carve with this replaceable carbide 45 degree V carve bit again from Tools Today. Then I watched the magic robot do its work. With an Amana 45 degree chamfer bit in the router table, I added a small chamfer around the edges of the board to soften the feel a bit, which also takes care of that little bit of tear out under the logo you might have noticed. Then I applied my homemade board butter, which is a mix of mineral oil and beeswax to keep it all natural and to not have customers question the food safeness of it. To class it up just a little more, I cut some leather for a hanging loop and tied it on. And that is what a finished board will look like. We plan to make these for local wineries, gift shops, wedding gifts, etc. And do you remember that knife block I made a little while ago? Yep, those are going into production as well. I'm thinking of setting up a pre-order on boards and knife blocks, so if you're interested, let me know in the comments and I can forge a plan to move forward. If you enjoyed this video and are not already subscribed, consider hitting that subscribe button and go ahead and ring the bell to be notified when I post new content. And as always, thanks for watching.